Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again in this section of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, welcome again. I hope you enjoyed the uh, you know, this sunny weather we've been having of late has just been great. It's just been great, great, great. And as you know, we're right in the midst of um, of the election. All sorts of things are happening around us. And uh, boy, I tell you, we had a we didn't have a, such a, an outing, if you will. The outing this this last this past time, it really had some problems. You know, I mean, we, as you know, we spent quite a bit of time trying to get the get out the vote aspect of it. And boy, I tell you, it it really didn't look so good. So. Uh, we got to get you back in a motivated state to get out and vote. I realize that there, 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 there's there are issues and whatever, but the fact is, you got to get out there and vote. And for those and for those young people who might be interested in running for office, run for office, file, get up there, get out there, get involved. Well, I tell you what, we're going to get a little in, get get a little enthusiasm this time around with my <laughs> guest that I have with me right now. Very enthusiastic kind of a guy <laughs> on the same subject aspect. I'm talking about. Um, uh, the Oregon League of Minority Voters. I mean that that really has some meaning. I mean, as a, as you look at the uh, the logo, his, his his logo aspect of it is fantastic. The mission statement is awesome. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the opportunity to read the the mission statement right up front uh, before I even introduce you to my guest because it, it, it's such a an honor to have him here. I've uh, been knowing uh, this gentleman for quite some time and. But let me do this. Let me go on and read this mission statement, if you don't mind, of the Oregon League of Minority Voters. Uh, it goes on to say that um, the mission of the Oregon League of Minority Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization founded on the vision to promote broad understanding of the issues that un 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 uniquely impact people of color and minorities with a mission to re-engage majority involvement in civil rights causes. Oregon League of Minority Voters seeks to empower communities through education and training with the aim to provide a positive and open environment for citizens to discuss their views of race relations, equity, and social justice without fear of retaliation and division. Its founder and executive director is Mr. Promise King. Promise, how you doing? Thank you, sir. Welcome Thank you, board. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Doing, this nice is quite a job. Hey, why don't we just start off by just expanding on that mission statement right off the bat? Yes. Promise. Well, when we, uh, I, let me tell you a little bit about myself. That's, oh. That sounds good. That yes. sounds good. Yes. Yeah, that, My that good. backgrounds, you know. Uh, I thought we all knew. Yeah, but, yes. But now we really know. <laughs> Go on. Uh, I, I came to this country. My first job was uh, as a reporter covering City Hall for the Portland Observer newspapers. Hmm. I left there for the Scanner newspapers, also covering politics and race relations. I left there for the Salem as chief of staff to represent uh, Deborah Kafuri. I left Kafuri to go work for the state treasurer, Randall Edwards. After some time, I came back as a columnist for the Portland Tribune, writing on race relations and, and, and writing on, on politics. Okay. I left there back to politics at city, city, city Hall, Portland City Hall, Senior Policy Advisor to Dan Sussman. Mm -hmm. Then from here, I'll begin to see this journey has been long and hard and exciting. <laughs> okay. What is next for me? Then I looked around and I found that um, there's really no league of minority voters mm -hmm. anywhere in the country. Hmm. Really? Yes. We have a voice, a uh, league of conservation voters. We may have their voice, league of women voters. There has never been a league of minority voters. So I uh, gather some Oregonians and say, hey, let's make history. Mm -hmm. Let's create an organization that will empower, educate, not just to grow spectators, okay. but to grow participants mm. in this part of politics mm. and democracy. Mm. So we've been here now for seven years, and we've been very, very pragmatic and successful with framing the issues. I impact minorities and I impact minorities in this state. And we're hoping to go national uh, first in swing states from Virginia to Nevada to Iowa caucus will be having uh, civil rights uh, in 2016. So uh, I want to thank those of you 
uh, people like you have been a big supporter of my, me personally. And uh, you see, that's just a synopsis of what's mm -hmm. going on uh, with League of Minority Reporters. Okay. Well, look, let's just get right into it, I guess. Uh, you know, when you start thinking about it, you've been in, like I said, you've been in this business for seven years now. Yes. Uh, what what progressions have you seen with reference to getting out the vote among minorities? Like I said, uh, one of our prou priorities uh, is not just to grow spectators, right. but to look at issues that the presses that keep minorities away from the poll in the first place. Okay. Education, poverty, economic, and business. How are those... Uh, how are we making progress in the education line? Mm -hmm. What we're doing is to, first of all, we say... If we're going to put out uh, leadership out there, we need to be at the table. We created uh, debate teams uh, to empower minorities with the ability and the skills to espouse the aspiration of their communities. Mm -hmm. So you and I have to just back off and let them speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we went also and opened forums where Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals can come I talk about these issues in a honest, mm -hmm. uh, less judgmental uh, way uh, about the issues that uniquely impact uh, communities of color. So, uh, but, but, but overall, more broadly, um, you must agree that in every election period, every election mm -hmm. season, you have politicians coming to our neighborhood to ask for votes. Mm -hmm. But at the end, where did they go? Did they come back or when they... Uh, most times, uh, not all of them. What we're trying to do is to pull them, make them accountable for the promises they make mm -hmm. in the first place why they are why, why they are running as candidates. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we're trying to uh, do, at least to create that awareness and that education. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you, you mentioned several areas like education, mm -hmm. jobs, and things, things economic yes. development, things of that mm -hmm. nature. Let's spend a little time in each of those areas. Okay. Like, for instance, education. You know, Portland Public Schools, as you know mm -hmm. for a fact, mm -hmm. that um, they've had one of the, probably one of the major, most major failure rates in the state of Oregon. Yes. Uh, were there were there any area were there anything that you you had maybe a forum of discussion along that line? Did you find any answers, if you will? Any yes. Uh, well, well, for the past four years now, okay, we've had. State of civil rights. State of civil rights. Okay. We we've, we've been supported by major university, Lewis and Clark College, okay. and the Pacific Warner Pacific College and First University of Oregon. Uh, we go to this university to table these issues about how do we open education up, how do we close the achievement gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me step back and uh, look at structurally. Uh, whether educa the education that was framed in the 70s still serve our children. I said no. Here's why. When they were framed in the 70s, they were framed to educate and teach kids who are willing and ready to learn. Mm -hmm. Some of the kids are kids of color, are kids of low income families who come from an environment that is dep depressed, an environment of needs. Well, probably they sleep well. They have a uh, mom and dad who uh, struggle out on drugs. Those kids, regardless of what you do, are not ready and willing able to learn. Hmm. I have seen that again and again. Then let's come back from the, the difference, the difference that I see from our administrators. The difference is arising from the fact that those who ought to be at the table People like you and people like those who all understand the systemic and uh, 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 failures and the system failure and institutional failures of our current education process are not there. We have chair leaders coming from the table. This is our challenge. If uh, those who run education, especially, uh, especially, can really call those who really are not at the table, the so called rabble rousers. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, we have tried for three decades. Mm -hmm. We have not closed the gap. We've asked for money. Money hasn't helped us, even if uh, a, a lot of, of things we've done. But the, gla uh, the, the gap between uh, uh, students of color and white students have not closed. Why? Help us ask that question. We are the League of uh, Minority Voters. 
we are sending forums to ask that question. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. We ask you the question, what is it that we want to do? But the resistance, the difference mm. for system change is part of the problem. Will we get there? Do you think you can get there? Oh, uh, Bruce, as you know, I'm not a cynic. Right. I'm an incredible right. optimist. Right. I'm optimistic that uh, if you pound on the door enough, it will break down. Mm -hmm. But how long, I can't say. But I am sure that with the enthusiasm and the courage that surrounds this conversation now that we bring to the table, right. I see a shining light at the end of a tunnel. Good. You know, one area, and I'm going I'm to I'm ask you this because you've been very much involved. One, one area has been the, the lack of, of, uh, of a presence of educating culture in the classroom. Yes. Uh, you know, because if you don't know where you've been, you will know where you're going. You know where you're going, and 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 oftentimes, uh, I know that down in the South, they've they've made some restrictions, if you will, in, mm -hmm. in, as far as American history, mm -hmm. up to a certain point in, re yeah. in reference to the in, into the classroom mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of it. Uh, your thoughts about that peace aspect of it? I mean, uh, you know, when you, when you think about the Civil War mm -hmm. and whatever, we were very much involved in the Civil War of this yes. country and as Americans, mm -hmm. and we fought for it. But we, but there's this this this, uh, this lack of inclusion in it. So it's, it's always been a difficulty uh, being able to identify in the in that arena. And so I've always thought about, well, if it's not being taught in the in the in the classroom, how in, how can you get, if you will, the majority to accept the, this this minority group? We're, we're constantly talking about civil rights and this mm -hmm. that and the other. Whatever. What do you think? Any thoughts about that? About one's culture not being in the classroom? I, I, I think uh, one of the um challenge we also have yeah. in framing these issues uh, that get us to real solution is the group think. First of all, you have to uh, look at the ratio of those who run the systems. Mm -hmm. If they have no understanding, uh, a clear understanding of the relevance of, of culture in the scheme of education, mm -hmm. of kids who are coming from different cultures, different right. countries, mm -hmm. and who are uh, coming from different communities, mm -hmm. then you can see there's a, a challenge in framing uh, the uh, relevance of mm -hmm. culture in the overall scheme of mm -hmm. teaching our children. Mm -hmm. I have seen that uh, the, League, the League of Minority Voters, uh, that's why we, we're trying to uh, reach out uh, to our tangible program like the Co-Science. What I realized, Bruce, is that if you come to the table without an agenda, you you will just be a partaker, not a participant. Mm -hmm. um, if if the education uh, administrators really want to close the gap, then I think they need to do. They need to teach us uh, the history of the heroes that are different from what we have now. Mm -hmm. They need to teach us, have a curriculum that appreciate and respect the history of those who are coming, those who have been here. Uh, they also need to teach us uh, and make intentional mm -hmm. the, the history and the work and, and the courage and the commitment and the contributions of all those who who are different from what we have now. Mm -hmm. And the textbook ought to be changed. Uh, we need to revisit our curriculum, especially on history, and also about ethics. Mm -hmm. Also, ethics need to be taught in our schools. So um, uh, in doing that, I'm sure that uh, uh, we have a clear path to empowerment for those who feel that the school doesn't serve them well because of the absence of the cultural uh, uh, inadequacy that is embedded in our correct curriculum. Well, we appreciate you getting involved in that piece. That's a very mm -hmm. important piece. Now, as far as job concern, that's another major issue. As, as I was looking at, uh, as your, at your piece here that you shared with me, mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, the Oregon League of Minority Voters Program projects and events. Mm -hmm. I was very interested in your science on wheels. Uh, when I think about, when I, when I read that piece, I mm -hmm. thought about Intel, Mm -hmm. I thought about all the, excuse the French, all the foreigners who come here, yes. get the education, mm -hmm. and then go back home, mm -hmm. and then Intel calls them up and hires them. Yes. When, here we've got an education system here. Mm -hmm. that w what's happening with the science in the schools? 
and then, but so I was very much interested in, mm. in what you, one of the projects that you were looking at, Science on Wheels, mm -hmm. Oregon League of Men, you know, it establishes cool science, community science on wheels, mm -hmm. goal, goal to promote employment, jobs, and interest in science in our communities. This project is an after-school program that seeks to retrofit a mobile unit, retrofit a mobile unit into a moving classroom mm -hmm. equipped with computers and materials for science and math. And I really got excited about that because yes. I'm saying, What's happening with our educational system? And here you are responding to an issue that's right there. The jobs are sitting right there, but yes. the kids are not graduating. Yes. Talk a little bit more. How did you get there? Why did you get there? Well, well we got there. Yeah. We, I had a press release in my office almost four okay. years ago. Okay. Uh, some of the um, cyber companies, some of the tech companies are looking for, they have almost 200,000 jobs. Wow. Hope they, they're looking at it. I, I was uh, emailed uh, some of the jobs and I looked around and I didn't see uh, some of minority folks. So I, I, I went to my board and I said, look, let's look at poverty. Mm -hmm. Let's do a campaign on poverty so we can highlight one, the causes of generational poverty how we can decimate and break it and make impact or mitigate some of the issues that cause poverty in the first place. We did that, we ran that campaign for two years. In 2011, we realized that uh, the shortest path way to a job for com uh, a person of color mm -hmm. is if you study science, tech, engineering, right. and math. Right. Then we said, okay, there are a lot of science yes, right. STEM programs. Right, right, right. Who is seeing that? Yes, right. Who is seeing those programs? <laughs> we took a survey. We said ninety-nine percent of those who on leverage who leverage those opportunities are not kids whose parents are either from communities of color or have no car or transportation. Mm. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. So we said okay. We have opportunity to attend science after school program, mm -hmm. but the wedge is access to transportation. What do we do about it? We decided that we're going to have an obligatory response. We will design a bus, equip it with computers, sort of a roving classroom, put a 24 7 hotline in that bus. Hmm. Uh, and have a projector, a Wi-Fi, so any kids that are going to that uh, 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 boss will have access to science, math, and uh, instruction. Hmm. And we'll not just park it in a schoolyard, we will drive it right straight to the communities. So we we'll, we'll want to work with Home Forward so that we can reach kids who really will not have access to it. Then we did a survey on how do we reach them. We find out uh, in Park Rose neighborhoods, Jefferson Clusters, um, Hillsboroughs, and Troutdale school districts need this. And, and most time, some of the students who can access science don't have access to transportation. So this function is mobile unit will function as a, a, a transportation alternative. Mm -hmm. for these kids. Hmm. That's, a, that's a very interesting piece. Yeah. Now, in terms of um, the, the technical community reaching out, to, yes. is this something that you've gotten some sort of support along that line? Yeah, we, we're getting like support. Intel, let's say. I mean, yeah, we're like getting easy. support from uh, Friend Maya Foundation, okay. Safeway Foundation. Okay. Um, we're getting support from our institutions, uh, University of Oregon. Uh, we will work with Portland Community College Foundation to see if we can give those kids a scholarship. Uh, we're reaching out to Intel and Hill Packard and some of the tech companies. Uh, we're looking forward. Coca-Cola also is coming on board. Coca-Cola Coca okay, okay. is coming on board too. So, and um, I should not, uh, Providence Hospital Providence, coming on board. Okay, okay, and, okay. and West Fargo is mm -hmm. coming on board. Mm -hmm. By the time we leverage and galvanize this uh, hype, we should be able to deliver a solid boss mm -hmm. that will help us advance mm -hmm. interest in science, advance interest in job and opportunities mm -hmm. for this uh, community. 
You know, I had a couple of times I had, had Chalk Talk. Remember Chalk Talk? Yes. And they've been yeah, supported yeah. by Fred Myers and, mm -hmm. and uh, they were they'd be a good find because they too were talking along that line. Mm -hmm. they, they they weren't doing the things that you were doing. Yeah. They were just basically making analysis, if you will, and bringing mm -hmm. that information back to the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the community at large in terms of the um, the response that they would get, you know, it, just analyzing, if you will, the yes. people see. Yeah. We talked to us a good piece. I, I just I just thought about that when you were saying that. Um, yeah, we, we would like to invite yeah, anyone, anyone who wants right. to participate. Yes, right. We cannot sit down and allow our children to go um, out or fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. We have opportunities. What is required is the courage of all of us to galvanize uh, our commitment to these issues that impact our children because they have a future for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. They you're have right. a future. Right. Now, the, I guess the other side of that would also be is it, uh, how, do, how do you, what do you, what do you say to the Portland public school system, if you will, and to the teachers who are in the classrooms and who may be teaching science and whatever, how do they fit and share with them? What do you think? I, I wa first I met with Polar Public School administrators where we're working. Uh, hopefully they will come to the table yeah. for a second meeting okay. on how we can advance this goal. Good. Make this uh, program project functional. Um, I just, there are so many issues yeah. that involve in the classroom now. Mm -hmm. And the teachers that teach our children Otto, you want to understand that you have a supporter out there. You, you have community members who are truly want to support you. But you need to come out and tell us what you know not. Because the challenges that face our children uh, define what our tomorrow will look like. Mm -hmm. So this is critical for the League of Minority Voters and all of our board members educating our children so that they can be good participants, so they can get involved in civic duties, is a tax that we don't take for granted. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about another little area. I'm just going right down these lines, if you will, okay. about your program, projects, and events. I think it's very important, and I really want to get this out there. Your regional equity initiative. Yes. What does that say? What does that mean? This is what gets me excited. Okay. You know, um, you've heard, heard of equity. Equity is becoming a buzzword. Right, right, right. Equity, this, equity, equity is, that. Yeah, right, right, right. Equity for us is a structural adjustment of system and institution. You better say that one more time. A structural adjustment of okay. systems and institutions to meet current demand yes. and current reality. Yes, yes. It is not a buzzword. Is different from diversity and inclusion principles. Okay. One has to do with structural adjustments, okay. which require uh, structure, we require adjustment. The diversity and inclusion require implementation of current system to make it more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One has to do with systems that were created that are no longer viable and no longer effective. Okay. I tell you an example. Sense. It yeah. makes sense. When men were architects, built, what they did is reflected in our restaurants today. When you go to women's restroom in old buildings, what do you see? You have one bucket, yeah. and men have four buckets. Yeah. But what is the implication today? When you go to a stadium, you see women long line, and men just go in and out. Yeah. Huh. So... Mm -hmm mitigate that the solution from those usual corners have been let's put a woman to run the whole building. That line will not shrink an inch. Right. Even if we put a woman as president of that building, what is required is a structural adjustment of women buckets in the restroom to meet that long line. That's equity. Hmm. It is not platitude. <laughs> Sad that he's been boiled down to platitude. Equity is, is a system adjustment, system mitigation, having a lens to measure where we are, where we ought to be. Mm -hmm. So for us, we said we're going to create an initiative, which is a regional equity initiative, because every city now 
has an equity office. We want to galvanize elected officials to say, okay, let's define what equity is regionally. Why are we doing this? For the past three decades, Bruce, our planning culture has given us gentrification. Planning mm -hmm. culture, uh, sidestep broad and butter issues. Mm -hmm. It revolves around lifestyle issues, parks and rec. These are great if you're middle class and you can assess them. But if you're poor and needy and from communities of color, you don't have no voice. You need economic bread and butter uh, principle involved in the lifestyle issue that define all of our planning culture. Mm -hmm. So for us, we said we weren't going to just go out there and say kumbaya. Our plan is to governize electoral officials who run these planning sessions, who preside over these institutions and systems, and say, okay, it's better for us to have a regional lens, better for our region to have an equity lens that serves everyone, because poverty cannot be condoned in one uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It disperses in our region. Uh, housing... Uh, Prices in Hillsboro and in Outlet City are cheaper than houses within the city. You know that. Mm, yeah, that's right. What yeah. gave rise to that is a function of our development, our planning. When you do redevelopment, a lot of transit re related development, mm -hmm. what happened? Prices of rent, accommodation go up. What happened? People disperse to where they can find um, a house. Mm -hmm. And, and plus that, we ask them, go find a job. If somebody who rely on transportation is hard. So for us to be smart and innovative, we said we were going to bring uh, an, a regional equity initiative with a lens. Okay. So that at least we can move together as a region to mitigating the impact of poverty, and the anxiety that comes out of it, the uh, morph into crimes and burglary and all that. So we want to mitigate that by really having one voice, regional lens, to help cities who are already doing equity issues. Jeez, that's quite a that's quite a feat. I mean, I, uh... Bruce, I, I'm telling you that I having served as a columnist, uh, working as yeah, senior true, policy. True. Advisor to three elected yeah, officials. Yeah, yeah. You, I've you, been around. Been, I have you, you, seen. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I've been able to um, uh, profile my solution when I'm called upon. Most right. time, my views are not. Um, they don't cuddle yeah, the right, status right, quo. Exactly. I say right. what's on my mind. I say let's debate. Yes. Then let's go with superior reasoning. And you know, as I know that uh, um, the club I want to belong is a club that do right by folk. I like that. I like that. In fact, on that particular note, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come right back to Promise because we got a lot more to talk about. Take a short break and be right back. Tell your friends, get to the TV. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Again, uh, the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. We're interviewing Mr. Promise King, founder and executive director of Oregon uh, League of Minority Voters. And we have been discussing some very, very uh, interesting issues and, and solutions. And I, I'm, I'm just so excited about the fact that he's here with us today. And I'm sure this is going to probably translate to, to you and, and maybe uh, resulting from some of the solutions that you have been looking for for quite some time, especially those who are still, you know, have kids and things of that nature, concerned about their education, those of you who are looking for jobs, things of that nature, those are, and just just a whole gamut of things. So I won't get beyond this point because there's some other areas that I want to cover with Mr. King uh, so that we can uh, follow up on this piece. Uh, we, we just got off a regional equity initiative. He went through that. And, and then the other area that I wanted to sh- talk with a little bit about is speech and debate leadership program. I thought that was a yes. speech and debate leadership mm-hmm. program. What yes. Was? Uh, I think uh, one of the challenge you often find for people who have been um, uh, neglected or disposed of or people who have been oppressed mm-hmm. somehow what goes first is their voice. What replaces that is the timidity, the ability to think. What overwhelms the cynicism they have about the society, mm-hmm. and that in itself check them, the ability to engage. For us, as an organization who is trying to promote leadership and engagement, civic engagement mm-hmm. and empowerment. The ability to espouse the aspiration of your communities, public speaking skills require mm-hmm. to to advance your interests in, within the scheme of uh, our state is paramount, and critical, and very mm-hmm. crucial. Mm-hmm. So we decided that to empower a young create a, a young leadership of tomorrow, create leaders of tomorrow we must equip them with the ability to speak mm-hmm. you so, know uh, you're gonna I, yeah. I, I, I just want to hear just for a moment because I'm thinking about this last election yes you know and the lack if you will of an entity mm-hmm. to give folks who are running who mm-hmm. are seriously wanting to run the opportunity to pick up some of those skills yeah before they got out there on the get out there mm-hmm. in the field you know when, when they're mm-hmm. actually running and so that's a good piece that you're talking to. So mm-hmm. you can expand. I just want to make sure that yeah. thing, when I think we, about Sharon Maxwell and Michael mm-hmm. DeRoe and mm-hmm. and uh, Teresa Rayford, mm-hmm. you know, just just folks who are just out there on their own. But mm-hmm. if there was some entity, yes, uh, we, 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 uh, we let me address that quickly. Yes. We our doors are open to anyone who wants to acquire their skills. Okay. We have training, uh, potential, and prospect for that person. In fact. Uh, some of the minority candidates we've helped in doing their messaging and communication, okay. including those who are already in the offices right now. I don't want to name names. Mm-hmm. We've helped them uh, big time in reaching their goals. Um, let me get back to the debate. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Go on. We launched the debate team uh, three years ago at Renoid High School. Mm-hmm. Renoid okay. High School with 25 students from 14 countries. Yes, hmm. and last year, all of our students, first-time college graduates, some of them are now uh, went to community college to study music. One is a pianist, the other one is a violinist. Hmm. Uh, what we impacted on them is not just the ability to speak, but the courage to face your situation and your circumstances. I visited with uh, the audacity to succeed, hmm. not just to survive. Mm-hmm. So for us, impacting them, uh, getting them ready for leadership requires just more than just public speaking skills. Mm-hmm. Require teaching them ethics, mm-hmm. what makes a good citizen. Mm-hmm. So that's why our program is very unique and different. Point. We have youth debate teams, we are trying to launch a minority victory fund to help us identify those who 
who require that training, who already, like names you mentioned, mm -hmm. people like that auto, uh, right now they can come to right. our okay, office good, good. and they won't have enough people with enough skills to take them into a 10 weeks training or two right. weeks training mm -hmm. to banish their ability. To Is there a cost them. involved in that? There's no cost. There's nothing we do that has any cost. Good. Thank goodness to all of our sponsors like Fred Meyer and, uh, and Safeway and uh university of oregon and all of our uh, uh new builder uh, clinic all of our supporters, supporters yeah. for providing that prospect and capacity and resources good. for us to do good to our communities good good appreciate that okay and there's another now here are some 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 dates that uh, you've got projects or events that are going to be happening in the yes. near future i thought that was very interesting uh, summer Youth Leadership Training, August the yeah. 20th. What do you, what do you, what do you uh, want to do there? 20th. We're going to do that in a Park Rose School District. Park Rose, okay. We, are, we have about 25 kids registered now. And if you do need to reach us, we still have a um, few spots left. Okay. Uh, to reach us at info at oregonlmv.org or call our phone number. And I'm sure you're going to show that. Yeah, yeah, let's see what yes. that phone number is. Yeah, yeah. That, but let's see it. Let's let's quote him right now. What is that phone number again? You uh, that number? Uh, phone number. Uh, we have yeah, the phone number. 503-946-8526. Again, 503-946-8526. For any question for that matter. Yes. It's located right here mm -hmm. in the community, uh, 804 North Alberta, Portland, Oregon, 97217. Again, you can write them to if you want to, right? Yes. Make, making your attention. Make. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, good. All right, then. Now, that's that's that particular event. Now, there's the other one, which, from a political standpoint, I thought that, was, that <laughs> struck my interest right off the bat. <laughs> Excited. And then hopefully we might be able to video that and yes. have a discussion after they've mm -hmm. done that debate and do that mm -hmm. at a point in time. Mm -hmm. You On October the 28th, yes. the State of Civil Rights. Yes, the state, state of, of civil, civil rights. rights. What, what's your definition? Well, uh, uh, well I, I won't identify the, the persons yet, but as far as I'm concerned, it should be all candidates. But let's talk about the state of civil. What, what does that mean? And then I'll tell you. And then I'll tell you who the uh, uh, what it means is for us to take stock, to take stock of where we are as a state, state of Oregon, state of Oregon, with regard to civil rights. Where are we? How are our institutions or system carrying us? Are they viable? Are they effective? Are you going to be the moderator? Uh, Who's I will going to be the moderator? Are there going to be a panel or what? We, we, last year we had a panel. We had a panel. Yeah, this year we will have candidates who are running for the U.S. Congress, Senator Merkley and Dr. Webby. Yeah, the Senate. Yeah, for the yeah. Senate. Yeah. That's the yeah. Yeah. Senator Merkley and Monica Webby. Yeah. Be very, well, you know, that's kind of interesting because as I introduced you in regards to the nonpartisan aspect mm -hmm. of it, you were able to get two, probably the top two uh, political uh, runners in, the, in this, this election period mm -hmm. to agree to that, the last debate. They have, I think anyone who is representing Oregon, anyone okay. who wants to represent us, as a state had no option but to respond to the need of a sizable segment of minority voters. They you know what if we call you you didn't respond, then it shows your true character of what you think about minority mm -hmm. issues. Because we are championing this issue in a bipartisan, non partisan way. So uh, anyone who comes to our event be sure to have fairness and justice. Mm -hmm. now, and I'm just again thinking about the debate, the state of civil rights. Are mm -hmm. they going to be given background material in terms of some of the issues that are major concerns so that they will be more, they, they, at least they'll be uh, aware? Now, what we intend to do, do what that? we intend to do is to hear from them. Okay. Where they think we are, what solution they That's think. Good. That's good. I like that. Yes. I like that. What is our solution? When do they, are we doing well? Mm -hmm. Are we doing good? Is this fantastic civil right? Do we need to mm -hmm. come together and walk on? Mm -hmm. And the areas that we ought to be working on right now, mm -hmm. what is our solution? How will they move us forward? Maybe someone 
you know, say, well, I, this is not my deal. But we want to fight from them. Because mm-hmm. what they believe uh, with the state of civil rights, where we are from immigration to police black relationship mm-hmm. to um, all the issues that impact uh, jobs, yeah, 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 race right. relation, right. economic, environmental justice, all of these issues that impact our civil rights as a people and as a state. Good. I like that. I like that. Well, look, um, now that we've sort of gone through the programs, the projects, and the events aspect of it, yes. let's talk a little bit about your latest um, uh, uh, award, uh, the Liberty and Hope Award recipients of 2014. Oh, yeah. Uh, first off, you, you have this annual, was this an annual event? Yes. An annual event? Mm-hmm. Uh, one, why do you have the event, and what purpose is it? What, what purpose? For, and for what purpose? Bruce, even as we like to... Uh, point figures and condemn and clamor and advocate. Yes. We also want to celebrate the best of our human spirit. Okay. We want to celebrate the best progress. The progress of no matter how little, but we want to celebrate it. We want to point out those in the majority who's hearing our clarion call to get involved and to help our communities, those who preside over our institutions in the majority, most time they are white. We want to say, look, it's okay to be CEO of white and care for communities of color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we point those people out. This year was amazing. Well, it is. I mean, these guys, they're very amazing to have even gotten. Yeah, exciting yeah. Uh, dinner. We had an exciting dinner. and. Uh, Dan Whiting, who's uh, CEO of Whiting and Kennedy, amazing human being. He's done so much for our community. Uh, actually, get a chance to hear more of what he did mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. our youths. Okay. Uh, then uh, Greg Walden, uh, he's working with our vets and promoting uh, um, our First Amendment rights or fighting for internet uh, freedom and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ron Whiting for his championing civil rights. Oh, yeah. no, Ron. Ron has been our communities and promoting our issues and growing uh, leadership in among our communities. So we want to tell their stories, and we did. So this is what we do annually. We relax our shield and bring everyone together to at least celebrate the best of our human spirit. Good. I noticed you you sort of um, made sure you had that you had the opportunity since you had this uh, this issue where folks were there. Yes. And they were right there and then you had them there. I noticed that you had a, a very dynamic keynote uh, <laughs> speaker. Uh, very very well known uh, the Reverend Dr. W. G. Hardy. Hardy, Jr. yes. I mean, I the love, senior I pastor love the of Highland pastor. Church. <laughs> yes. uh, oh, I've, I've known his dad for a long time. <laughs> yes. I wish he'd been saying senior there, but mm-hmm. I'm, but he carries quite a pack too. <laughs> He's quite quite a man. Yeah. What, what was his message? His message was, look, you you can't just sidestep step three percent. I said I've done ninety-seven percent, and he reminded us the population of black folk in Oregon is less than six percent. So even if you do ninety percent, yeah, it means you're leaving out a whole host of people. <laughs> so that was his message, and then and I I, I I realized that he. I mean, aside from the father, he's a very smart brother, yes. oh, smart yes. pastor. Oh, yes. Yes. His dad to his mom. Around. Oh yeah, and, 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 and the whole too. family. Yeah. yeah. For his vision, his insight, the consistency of his message, his ability to mm-hmm. really uh, point to issues that impact all of us, and his message of collaboration really was a tizing and excitement for me personally. Mm-hmm. And what was your lasting statement? Uh, and I noticed you, you basically did, gave the closing remarks. Yeah. Did you recapitulate that? And <laughs> what, did you, what did you tell? I know it was probably about the next step. <laughs> <laughs> what, what yes. Your, your... Uh, one of the things I shared, my message is um, rigidity in matters that are socially political in nature scones the virtue of adaptability 
scorns the virtue of consensus. Hmm. We should reject that. We should reject any intruder who would divide us across race, across class, across economy, across across communities. We should reject such intruder. We are one. The issues that dog our path our true enemies. Our true enemies are the needs, the unemployment in black communities, the high unemployment in Hispanic community, and all those uh, 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 lack of access to opportunity and prospects, as for lack of opportunity for small business. Those are the real enemies. Those are the enemies we ought to galvanize ourselves mm -hmm. and tackle with all our might and with all of our commitment and courage. So that was my message, and I also invited them, uh, as I'm inviting everyone now, to check us out in League of Minority Voters. We're going national. We're going now, uh, going national not because we're big and strong and powerful, but because we're well intentioned, and people around us support us not because they want anything from it, but they find their final deeds. The final days is for history to judge. But we inviting you to be a part of us as we try to bring the world together. The bitter politics of now is not can't fetch us the progress of tomorrow. The issues that we confront require not just Republicans or Democrats or conservative or liberal. It requires all of us. Yeah. For a long time, we have uh, divided ourselves across so narrow steps. It's about time for us to come together. I understand a kid who's dropping out of high school, dropping through the crack, is a future kid, future ham robber, future gang beggar, mm -hmm. and future uh, a person who will raise our taxes. So it behoves us for us to reach, extend our yeah, hands yeah. of fellowship, yeah. lay aside our division, and say, oh, okay, how can we come together as a community? How can we put behind us the bitter, uh, comfortable politics of division and focus on politics of togetherness? Because this issue requires uh, one spirit. Because one person, no matter how mighty, one organization, no matter how powerful, cannot help us beyond this point. We are at a crisis point. Yes, yes, yes. You know, that, that last statement that you just made in regards to we are in a crisis point. And I want to commend you and, and thank you from the community at large, for that matter, for our going thank you. and the fact that you're looking at expanding this thing around the country. Because I, I don't, I'm sort of like, I, I consider myself well read, and mm -hmm. I've not known of any entity like this around the country. But it's a, it's a courageous, uh, committed, uh, enthusiastic. I mean, I, I can use all these accolades, mm -hmm. but the fact of that is, uh, here you are. Uh, you mentioned the jobs that you've had mm -hmm. before. You could have stayed with any one of those jobs yes. throughout. And uh, in all due respect, I compare myself. You know, I've been at IBM, U.S. Mm -hmm. Bank, the whole nine mm -hmm. yards, and yet you give yourself to community. You know, and I, yes. I, can, I feel you. And it's it's a very lonely effort sometimes <laughs> and, oh, yeah. uh, but but it's but it's gratifying when you can see some of the results yes. as, as a result of some of the things you've mm -hmm. done so um uh, I, I take my head off to you i, I really thank you, thank you i really do and and i think that what you're doing is something that that the community at large should should embrace i'm going to embrace it i mean whatever thank i whatever i can do mm -hmm. to make sure that they get the information and, and out to uh, as, as to what you're doing your progress along that line Mm -hmm. And I would invite uh, employers and business folks and the like to give you a call and, uh, and, and, and see if they can do something with it. So thank you. I, I, yeah, I also, before I call, want to thank my board members. Good, good. Uh, yes, uh, I, was just, I was looking at some of those guys. Yeah. Show Dizano, I mean, I Show know, Dizano, show me, Danny, Danny Doyle. That's your board chair. Yeah, yes. you, got Tom, you got Tom Kelly. Tom Kelly, a new builder. Yes, yes. Uh, Mike Erickson. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Frank Gassers and all of those uh, people who are really helping us. Yes. To a yes. trend, to a trend, all, yes. of, all of our board members. 
Yes. Uh, yes. They have been a tremendous uh, help. Yes. In pushing this uh, goal. And I also uh, noticed like, your, your, your media sponsors. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about uh, your, the Asian Reporter. You got yes. Lim. You got Lim, John Lim involved in the deal. You got the Scandal. You got Bernie mm -hmm. involved in the deal. Mm -hmm. You got El Hispanic News. And you got KETU. I mean, you yes. covered the gamut, and that's yes. a very important piece. And I'm sure they're going to probably also share yes. uh, with the community the, uh, at yes. large and with their respective uh, cultures, if you will. I think mm -hmm. that's a very, very important piece as translators. And um, well, I tell you, this is this is quite a feat. I mean, and, and Thank just you, within seven years. Yes. And and I, I will reiterate the fact we are in a crisis. Yes. You know, I mean, we may hear about all of the issues that are outside of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Far East and said, said it could happen here it, if we don't yes. do something. Mm -hmm. And so your efforts, is, is, as far as I'm concerned, is something that should be, should be taken very serious. Thank you. And should be, folks should be involved in it. And it's not a selfish effort on your part. No. Yeah, I know that you've, been, you've involved everybody. I mean, just to mm -hmm. get those folks just to come under one roof, if you will, that's, that's quite a feat in itself. So mm -hmm. uh, I thank you for that and commend you for that and, and all those jobs you've had, like I said before, you didn't even have to do this. Yeah, I, I don't want to take the accolades. I feel queasy well, because this is it's a, it's a community yeah, effort, you know, Bruce. It's a fact. This you is know, a community you know, I, I effort. That, it's, it's it has I, done it. I'm I mean, just a servant in chief. Yeah, you know, but most people tend to rely on that, those careers and those retirements and things of that nature. But only a few will actually get out and do these kinds of things. You know, not not, not to say that it's open. It's open. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, but the fact of the matter is. You can do your own business thing or whatever, but mm -hmm. this is a this is really a major major feat because there are all sorts of issues that are mm -hmm. constantly constantly trying to break it down yes. and this that and the other and whatever. But uh, this is not what you're doing. This, mm -hmm. this is an inclusive kind of a situation yes. for all of us, and we need that very 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 much here. Thank so this you. Is, this is a great deal. We got about six minutes, folks. If you're interested, I'm gonna continue talking with Promise. But if you're interested in the, giving us a call we'll take a one or two calls That's of okay course you. yeah so one or two calls if you want to give us a call give uh, promise a call and and uh, ask him a question he'd, he'd be more than glad to to share with you. i might mention again uh, that you can contact him uh, again um, i want to make sure i'll get that address out there real good 804 north alberta and that's portland oregon 97217 that phone number is 503-946-8526 and then you can also email them at info at Oregon, OregonLMV.org or www.OregonLMV.org. Yes. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, along that line. And uh, I was just thinking about, yeah, I, mentioned all, I mentioned all the other folks, right? You did Tom Onger, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the founding yes. general secretary, Bill Crow, founding mm -hmm. chair. These are very well-known folks. Mm -hmm. Don, uh, I took... Okay, okay, PT. Okay, rising. And then Bernie's on that board, too. Yes. He's on Bernie, the board yes. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then on the executive board, you laid all those guys out on yeah. the aspect of it. So this has just been, there's been, any any lasting comments uh, uh, that you'd like? We got about, like I said, we got about four okay. minutes. We've asked people to give us a call if they'd like okay. to give you a call. But some other yeah. comments that you, any thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I um, my, my hope is that the state civil rights structures and institutions we can rally around to make them better last year we came out with um, a legislative bill to do just that senate bill 768 is a ways and means now couldn't get past that to do what now again to integrate all of our civil rights structures mm into one bold and efficient network. Hmm. Currently, if you discriminate against in employment, you go to Bali, Bureau of Labor and Industry. Okay. If it's housing, you somebody is trying to be funny with your rent, mm -hmm. you call DOJ. Okay, Department of Justice. Yes. Okay. If you're a minority contractor, mm -hmm. and you need a piece of a state contract, mm -hmm. You go to all dots, civil okay. rights, or, or going to the plan of transportation. Right. If your child is in the system, uh, you have Section 8, uh, all these uh, issues, welfare issues. Right. You go to DHS, civil rights. Department of Human Services. Yes. Right. Okay. Wow. What we wanted to do okay. is to integrate those systems 
into one place. Hmm. Called Civil Right Network. Civil Rights Network. Yeah. So we integrate from Bolivar, from DOJ, from mm -hmm. ODOT into that civil rights to be proactive in nature mm -hmm. and at the same time have the teeth to actually change or play an ombudsman role in assuring better civil rights. And where would this agency exist? Under the governor? Or? No. I mean, on his own. You on have own. legislative, yeah. Because if you put in order the governor, don't get me wrong, I love John Kitsuka. Mm -hmm. He's been an outstanding. But civil rights should have this independent I seen in uh, there are other models in in um, Kansas mm -hmm. that a, a a viable civil rights structure okay. that are able to sue uh, or have a teeth to investigate and also to proactively educate and inform hmm. both. So it'll be attorneys in that in that group. Yeah, within that scope, mm -hmm. have the legal power, firepower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a proactive nature to educate before we get to the legal uh, skirmishes. Okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that we have viable structures and uh, structures that are able to at least mitigate some of the complexity in the face by low income people. Mm, interesting. And I noticed too that you, as far as funding, you basically get some of the resources from each of those entities. Yeah, you don't, you, 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 you actually that, save, you're save money. money. You're saving money. You're saving but money. that effort was fought by the power that be. Wow. You know, they came up with some um, weak programs like taking a little bit of ODOTs and training minority contractors. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I. Totally felt that was a cop out. Mm -hmm. A knee jerk reaction to reach challenges mm -hmm. that face us as a state. It's been a tough one. I worked in those yeah. areas. You're right. And when you look at the results. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you have politicians uh, who, who are just okay with the status quo. Mm -hmm. But any person with a conscience, white, black, to ask questions about where we are on our civil rights structure. Right. How viable are they? Because we're wasting our taxpayers' money right, right. when we run around and embrace such weak systems that right. are no longer viable. Right. That are Real quick, like again, that legislator, to, so they can call that legislator. What was that bill again? Is that the Senate? Senate Bill 768. 768. Senate yeah. Bill 768. Check it out. Call your, call your legislator. And we're going to tell them to get involved yeah. and vote on that piece. Okay. Promise, it's been a pleasure. Thank I appreciate you. it very much. Thank you, Bruce. Keep up the good work. Thank you, okay, we'll see you again. Okay, All right, yeah. thanks. Folks, again, that's our program, and hopefully you will support this particular program. We'll see you next week. You have a good one. Take care. God bless.